Hey guys, welcome back to Attack on Adam World. How has your week been? Uh, my week has been... It's been interesting. It's been pretty interesting. I've, uh, I've done a few... I've done a few accomplishments. I finally beat Nino Kuni. Uh, much fa <laughs> much faster than if I was recording it. Uh, it's... Uh, I got a lot, I got a lot to, to talk about. Uh, Nino Kuni 2 at the moment, actually. I got a lot, I got a lot to say on that. I got a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, what else did I do? I started up Persona again. That's right. I started up Persona 5 because that game is... I've been having the urge to play that game for the fucking longest time for some reason. I can't, like, control myself. Like, I just need to play it. It's such a good game. It was definitely, like, my, uh, my game of the year last year. And I'm playing it again, so it can't be bad, right? It did so great. Uh, what else have I been doing? Um, I've been playing some ukulele. Play a little bit of ukulele. 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 I can't say it. Ukulele. <laughs> it's not hard. It's not a hard word. Uh, so, yeah. what? Well, uh, that's actually been going up on the channel, actually. And I'm, I'm not unself aware. Like, I'm, you know, I am self aware. I. I realize that I don't usually, I usually try and make it so that I have like two different types of games going up, like an RPG and like a, a platformer or an RPG or something else, you know, I, but there has been moments where we have had two things going up at the same time, like there was, I think uh, a couple of years ago where we had Digimon and Tales of Berseria going up at the same time, uh, it's, it's just one of those moments, it just happened to align, the stars aligned, and we're playing Jack Free, and we're playing uh, ukulele. I think ukulele is really funny. Uh, it's uh, well, I think I'm funny. <laughs> so it's, uh, I think ukulele is uh, quite dull and uh, comic-wise, anyway, it's quite droll. Uh, but I think I'm funny. So there you go. Uh, not to have a big head or anything, you know. Uh, I I really like Jack and Daxter. Uh, I mean, that's no secret. Right, that's no secret. I, I love Jack and Daxter, but uh, Jack Free, the playthrough of Jack Free, I think is it's good. It's good. I feel good about it, so that's that, that's a good sign, right? Uh, usually, I'm quite uh, I'm quite pessimistic and like bleh, all the time, but I'm actually actually feeling pretty good about it. So that's nice. Uh, I have brought I brought the Last Guardian, the Last Guardian for us to play, uh, for us to play after Ukulele. Because man, holy shit, the the Shadow of the Colossus playthrough was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was really, really good. I'm really glad I played that. Uh, I played that guys. Played that with you guys. Uh, I know Ico is technically the next game in the series, but uh, I've not. I've only got Ico on uh, PS3, and I'm told it's not very good on PS3. So I don't. I don't know. Uh, maybe we can play it at some point. Hopefully they'll do like a remaster of it, something like that. Uh, speaking of remasters, actually, uh, I was going to tell you guys about my day uh, currently, but you know what? Speaking of remasters, Shen Sega announced Shenmue 1 and 2 for PS4. Fuck yeah! Shenmue is a great fucking game. Shenmue is super fucking cool. It's like it's kind of like the predecessor to the Yakuza series, you know, like the Yakuza series kind of really learned from the Dreamcast's uh, Shemu and really fucking nailed it. Shemu is super interesting. Uh, I can't wait to play Shemu again, and I can't wait to play because I played it. I played it back when I had a Dreamcast, but I've not played it since. Like I've not played, not even touched it since. And I let me tell you, it does not look like it's aged well. <laughs> it doesn't look like it aged well at all. So that's quite hilarious. Uh, maybe we'll play that on the show. I think that game is really fucking long though. So who knows, but we might give it a go. We might we might play a little bit of that. Because Shenmue 3, I'm super excited for it. I think it's going to be really cool. Hopefully it's not an old fucking game and just like bogged down in the old ways of how it does things. I hope they've thought about that and kind of brought it into the modern era and perhaps... Uh, you know what, I... I won't often say this unless I think it's absolutely necessary, but perhaps if they just reskinned, like, Yakuza, <laughs> you know? Um, so hopefully hopefully it'll be good. It, it's going to be interesting no matter what, so I'm excited. I'm excited to play Shenmue 1 and 2. I never played Shenmue 2, 
Um, and uh, obviously, Shenmue 3 is coming out. I'm not sure if it's later this year. Is Shenmue later this year or is it uh, next year? Is Shenmue 2019? I think it might be. I think it might be 2019. I don't know. But I'm super excited. I hope that Shemu wanted to, they translate well, and hopefully they come out pretty quickly. They're coming out this year, so we know that much. Uh, the HD remake is coming out this year, so that's nice. Uh, I don't want to do this map, this map sucks. Uh, go back to World? Yes, please. Uh, but yes, my day. Uh, I had a horrible night. I had a horrible night. Like, the worst night I've had in... I had in a while. Like, I woke up, like seven or eight times uh all from nightmares and like horrible shit i don't know what i did i don't know what i ate or drank before going to bed like i don't fucking know what i did i don't know what i played or did i have no no clue but it was the fucking worst it was so bad and man it, it was just it was just really really bad it was such a bad night uh so i woke up like at 12 and i was like i felt like i'd ruined the whole fucking day and all that sort of thing, but um, I managed to get out. Uh, this is time of recording, of course, not uh, not the Monday. But I managed to get out of the house in time to nab myself a couple of shiny Mareeps from the Mareep uh, event on Pokemon Go. So there's that. I nabbed two Mareeps, two shiny Mareeps. Maybe I would have got another one if uh, if I was lucky enough to uh, find more. But we, I think I found about 70 candies. Sorry. I've only ever found like one or two Mareeps beforehand, so. I, didn't, I don't think I did terrifically well. Cause I really needed those Bereeps to like evolve into an Ampharos. I love Ampharos. Ampharos is so fucking cool. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is the fortune teller. Do we want to do this? Last time we did this, she fucking screwed us. Alright, do it. Fucking bitch. Can I kill her? No, I'm gonna kill you. No, uh, you're, you're dead. This is the end. Do your best. Um, you, you're dead. You screwed me. You screwed me one too many times. You're going down. Get our lead assassin out. Take it down. That's right. My level went down four because I took one from you. Unbelievable. Uh, anyway, what was, I, what was I saying? Yeah, so I got I got a couple of reaps. So that was cool. Got some Marie Pokemon Go stuff. Uh, that was nice. Um, but what else has been happening? Not much else has been happening uh, to me directly, I guess. Uh, I've been obviously I've been playing some more Jack Free. Uh, you know, got plenty of that. That's going to be continuing all the way right through to the end. Uh, hopefully ukulele will as well. I've, I've got so much stuff. I'm actually taking a little break from recording at the moment because I've got so much stuff recorded that I need to get it all rendered before I can <laughs> uh, start. So I might, I'm, I might not be recording till like uh, Wednesday. Although I say that, the Yakuza, the Song of Life, comes out. It comes out like tomorrow, right? It comes out on the Tuesday. So I guess I'll be recording an episode of that. That's for damn sure. Uh, so I guess I never really will be taking a real break from recording, but I mean, I'm taking a break from recording uh, ukulele and stuff because I've already got so much of it that I want to render it all out first. So I probably won't be getting any of that done. Uh, probably at least a Wednesday. At least a Wednesday, Thursday. So, but that's good. I feel like we're doing well. I feel like we're getting, we're hitting a stride. We're getting some cool stuff. We're having some, we're having some real fun. It's getting good. I'm, I'm super in, I'm super into it. I'm doing a lot of stuff lately. Oh shit! What the hell do I need? How the hell is there invincibility somewhere? Invincibility there. All right, we need to get rid of that. We need to get rid of the invince. All right, Mara, you're gonna throw Luna. Luna's going in. Double O agent. No, I don't want that one. I want the invincibility one. It's gone. Invincibility has gone. Hell yeah. Uh, so, what else? So I was going to talk about uh, Nino Kuni, right? I was going to talk about Nino Kuni. Uh, Nino Kuni, I fin finally finished it. 
So, uh, slight spoilers, okay? Slight spoilers. I'm not going to go into it too much, uh, but slight, sp slight spoilers and what I thought, okay? Like, thoughts on it and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's good. Like, Neo Kuni, overall, I enjoyed my experience with Neo Kuni. Uh, but the base building, for a start, was a complete disaster. And I remember telling you guys about this last week, so I don't want to like super go into that again, but that really never changed for me. I got fed up of building up the base because there was nothing to actually really do. It kind of just, the base kind of just grew. You didn't really do anything to accomplish that. Uh, there was a lot of times where I couldn't actually progress through the game because I needed something. It was like, oh, you need a boatyard. It's like, okay, so I need to be building a boatyard, but I've not got enough money. So I actually have to sit here and wait for the boatyard, for, for the money to come in because it's a currency that flops in over time. Uh, the battle system was never really was never really a struggle like it was never a struggle it was really simple it was uh, it I think I beat the final boss like 10 levels lower than than it I think I was like level 65 and it was like level 75 or something uh, and I managed to kill it off pretty pretty easily without much of an issue uh, the the final boss just kind of felt like the whole ending itself, right? So the whole ending itself kind of fucked it for me. Like, it kind of destroyed the entire story. It just got it. It's, it was like some fucking Fahrenheit shit. It just got his head stuck in a bucket of doolally right at the end. I don't understand. Like, right at the end. I mean, like, final cutscene. Final cutscene. Uh, not after the credits, because there's another one after the credits. But I mean, like, uh, which was also kind of stupid. Uh, but no, just beforehand, it was like, just before the credits rolled, the final cutscene of the main story, it was so fucking weird, and it was like, that I was kind of just like, this is dumb. Like, it just got his head stuck in a bucket of doolally, and I don't know where it come from. I don't know where, out of nowhere, it was just like, oh yeah, 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 this, this, this spoiler, it's spoiler, so I'm not, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna, I don't, I don't wanna tell you guys what, what it was, uh, because obviously that's the re the fucking bucket of do lally is the reward for beating the entire game. But yes, I wasn't very impressed with that like at all. I was kind of uh, peeved by it actually. Uh, but I enjoyed I enjoyed my experience with it. Like it was it was okay. It was it was just kind of it was just kind of slow, you know. Like it was the story was kind of slow. It wasn't. It took a while to go places, despite everything being super quick. You know, like, the story seemed to take a while to progress, despite... Despite it, like... Despite being so quick. Like, everything happened so quickly, right? Like, within the first five minutes of the game, like, the guy who falls from the thing. So if, you have, if you've watched the trailer or anything like this, it isn't really spoiler, it's like, first five minutes of the game. Uh, the character Roland is the like he's like the president of like the United States or something, and he gets warped to uh, the Nino Cooney land, right? And within five seconds, he's like, "I'm staying here with you, Ethan." It's like, what? What? Like, <laughs> like he sees the city get blown up, and then he warps, and then he's like, "I'm staying here with you, Ethan." It's like, what do you mean you're staying here with you? Your plot should be trying to find a way home. You're the president of the fucking United States. You've got a whole country to look after. Right? And then later on, through side quests, you find out that Roland has a son. And you're like, I'm sorry, so what, Roland, you, you've got a son, but you don't want to go back? Uh, and the, the, that's never really explained. You never really hear about his son uh, or like, if he has a wife or anything like that. You never really hear anything about that except through like little tiny side quests. Uh, like little fluff pieces and stuff like that. It it just feels so fucking bizarre and speedy. And there's a couple of points where a new party member will just be like, "Yeah, I'm joining you." So, why? Why would you join me? Yeah, cause cause I am. It's <laughs> like the things turn around so quickly, and it it's very clear that Studio Ghibli is not involved quite frankly. Like, it doesn't feel as fluid as what a Studio Ghibli movie does. And the animation's not as smooth as Studio Ghibli. The voice acting is... never stops being irritating. 
absolutely never stops being irritating whatsoever. It's it's truly ridiculous. Uh, so we do a couple more. So we do like five more and then try and get like another 15 in next time. Let's try and do that. Let's try and, get fifth, let's try and do five more levels because I want to get those five levels back from the fucking witch that took them away. Uh, oh, okay. What's this? Is this a good one? Thank God it wasn't that, that big demon guy. Uh, and also, like, the main character of Nino Kuni should be Roland. Right? Like, it should be Roland. But it's not Roland, it's Ethan. Uh, Ethan is a, a tiny little, like, Makote boy who's, like, half human, half cat. Because uh, I. And I believe his mother must be, like,. His mother must be human or something, I don't know. Uh, but it's... I don't think you ever really see see his mother. I'm not sure if you ever, ever do see her. Uh, but it's... Like, he's fine. He's not, like, a bad character. Uh, he's, his voice, his English voice actor is not... He's not, he's not got a bad voice. I just feel like the voice actor wasn't given proper direction or something. I don't... Because his voice itself is fine. Uh, either the voice actor didn't put any passion into it, or he wasn't given any direction whatsoever. Like there, that's what I think. But I, I don't know about that. Uh, Roland's voice actor was pretty good uh, and stuff like that. And there are some really obvious twists in the storyline that, if you can't see coming, you've probably not played the first Nino Kuni. Uh, you know, stuff like that. And it's just. It's just a very weird game overall because it's like the, the voice acting is the worst, right? The voice acting is the worst because there's so little of it, and the cutscenes are very, very small related. Like even when it comes to like the final fight, right? Even when it comes to the final fight, there's this final cutscene and stuff like this. There's then there's like another cutscene where Ethan just walks in and he's like, "Huh?" And then you have to read dialogue. And the dialogue isn't in like speech bubbles, right? So like in Persona 5, for example, because that's the one I've just started, I've literally just started playing. Persona 5, it when they talk, right, they'll be like, excuse me, and stuff like that. And then there'll be like a little speech bubble with their face and like text, right? That's fine because you know who's talking. In Nino Kuni, there'll be like subtitles sort of text. Yes, there'll be a name, but they're subtitles. So it's really like, it's really poorly implemented, I feel. Oh, fucking hell, really? Her again? Let's do it. What, you think I'm not gonna just murder you now? You think I'm just gonna let you live? You've done this three times. You're dead. You're dead. I'm gonna kill you. I can't believe that. Take her out. She lived. All right, you know what? Fine, you lived. Kiryasha, get rid of her. That's right. Stealing that three thousand exp, that level three thousand mob exp. He was like level six hundred, so right? What level is he now? Oh. <laughs> it wasn't that great. Oh well. Um, uh, but yeah, so it's like, because of, of the subtitles, it's just, it, it feels less fluent, you know, and, and kind of more irritating, where Persona 5, like, everything in Persona 5 is style, you know? Persona 5, like, nails everything about its aesthetic and its style, and it's, it just, it's flawless, where it's kind of irritating that there's so many games that do it better. When Nino Kuni can't even do it, and they had like, like the first game, the first Nino Kuni is like re a lot better. It's so the first Nino Kuni is really cool, and really good, and like the animation is beautiful in it, and it's so cool. This one, it just kind of isn't. I don't. It's lacking something. It's lacking that Ghibli magic, quite frankly. So I don't know. Maybe they shouldn't have made another one. Maybe level five should have focused on other things because level five, level five, are great. Is a great development team. They. They make really good RPGs, and they and they prove that on almost a daily basis. You know, like they're really good. 
So I know they can make RPGs, and the best part of this game is the, the combat and shit. Uh, leveling up and getting items is really, really messy, because they try and keep it really fluent. You know, they they try and, like, take away... Like, you know when you fight, finish a battle? When you finish a battle in any, any other RPG, it doesn't matter what RPG it is, any other RPG, what happens when you finish a battle? You know, you get the da 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 and then you get, like, a screen telling you how much EXP you got and all that stuff, and I love that. I love that screen. That screen is so fucking cool. But in this, you don't get a screen. You just get level ups on the side of the court on the side of the screen as you continue onwards, which is good or bad depending on your perspective, on depending on your uh, your own idea of how that game works. Right? Would you prefer a game to be like super fluent and continue working, continue working and like not have to keep stopping, or would you prefer that stat screen? Me myself, I prefer that stat screen. So that's what, I, that's what I prefer to do, right? I prefer to see that stat screen, see all the EXP come up, see all that stuff. Which is just not present in Nino Kuni. It's just not there. And that's what's kind of irritating as, as well. Like, there's not there's not those stats and stuff like that, you know? It's not, and it's not a game where you just have to continue to keep moving. You can stop me to be like, here's your EXP, here's your money, here's your stuff. You know? So, so I don't know. Uh... I don't know how I really feel about that sort of thing, but it's it's an interest it's an interesting game because overall I really enjoyed my experience with it. I, the combat is probably the best part of it. I think if uh, if you if you're like huge into RPGs and you feel like you can get really into them and like learn all the like, nitty, nitty gritty things and like learn how like all the higgledies work and stuff like that, because uh, the higgledies is just like pages of dialogue. So if you're like willing to like do all that sort of nonsense, I think that. You would really, really enjoy Nino Kuni, Nino Kuni too. Like the combat and stuff like that. You would, would really, really enjoy it. And if you're fine just to sit there and let your uh, your base gain money whilst you're doing other shit, like that's fine. You've you've made the right choice, you know. But if if like that, that sort of stuff doesn't uh, doesn't appeal to you. And traveling over a world which is actually kind of small, like the open world, it, like the world in most RPGs, it, like is pretty huge, right? Or it feels big, and stuff like that. Uh, but in this one, the especially with an, when you have an overworld map, right? When you have an overworld map, which is really nice to have, I like an overworld map. Uh, this game is surprisingly small. You don't even like, you don't actually even have to visit. Like later on, halfway through the game, they're like. Uh, without spoiling it, they're like, I need an item, go get it from the desert. So then you go to the desert and then you get an item, it's just in the open world and you get it and then you leave. And they're like, great, we need an item from, we need an item from the ice field that's in the, that's in the dungeon. So you go to the ice field, you find the dungeon, you do it. Like, yeah, that's it. Like, you, there's a massive ice field, you just don't, just don't explore it. You just don't have to explore it. Like, you can choose to, obviously, if you want to go exploring and you want to do a whole bunch of side quests. Uh, which is great then that's fine. Like, side quests are pretty good because most of the time they will give you a they will give you a citizen for your for your uh, castle land, you know, for your for your kingdom. Uh, which is really nice. That's actually a really nice reward and an, and an incentive to go and do those side quests. But most of what the side quests have to say and have to do uh, is all kind of fluff. You know, and like, it's I don't expect too much from side quests, uh, but like I kind of want some world building or some interesting speech, uh, which some of them do. Some of them do give you that interesting speech, which is really nice. But some of the side quests are just kind of like, just kind of like, I need, I need this thing. Uh, go find the thing that's over there. And it's like, okay, great, I'll go get it. And that's kind of, it's kind of lame. Uh, so it's it's a weird experience, right? It's weird that overall, I think I enjoyed my time of it, but. Uh, would I recommend you buy it at full price, or would I recommend it to you if you're not like, like super into RPGs? Like if you're not super into JRPGs, but you really like Pokemon, for example, I would say that Nino Kuni One is definitely like a definite buy for you. Like you might actually really enjoy that, but I would not recommend you buying Nino Kuni Two. You know, for example, because like obviously because the Pokemon feature is gone, uh, but it's it's a very different game and it's a. It's kind of like Star Ocean, and it does the Star Ocean combat 
better than Star Ocean does. So hopefully that's kind of like an indication. Or at least better than what the latest Star Ocean did it in. So hopefully that at least that's some sort of indication of what you guys might think. Uh, Alright, we should jump out of this area real quick. Oh, I got a warning. Maybe we don't want to jump out of this area. Oh my... Oh my lord. <laughs> These ships are always so fucking weird. Alright, we should do this area. We should do this one. I know this is floor. Technically, we were going to stop at floor 36. But this floor is really, really small. So I kind of want to do it. Uh, also, I have one more thing to talk to you guys about. One more thing to talk to you guys about before I uh, start rambling off random things. Uh, I don't know whether or not this information was available for a while. It could have, po it could possibly have been. Uh, but uh, Destiny 2, Destiny 2's next DLC, the next big update to the game, uh, will be out in May. Will be out early May. So we will be able to. We'll be able to play that early May. Uh, I don't know if it'll just be a third video per day or if it will take place or something. Depends if something's finished by May. Uh, but yeah, so that's coming. That's that's coming soon. So we'll go. We will soon be traveling back to Destiny 2, the realm of Destiny 2. Uh, it's 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 landed on some hard times. Poor Destiny 2. They Bungie, I think they tried. I'm not sure if they did. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sure how best to describe it. Uh, I like Destiny 2, but I do. Like, I really love playing Destiny 2, but I wish there was a lot more to do in Destiny 2. That's the best way to explain it. It's a fun game. There just ain't shit to do, you know. Uh, so there you go. That. That's coming in May. And uh, I didn't talk about it all this all this episode actually, which I suppose I could. Uh, should we just finish off these these floors? Uh, let's finish off these floors, actually, because it just popped into my mind. It just popped into my mind. There was a live letter for Final Fantasy XIV, right? So, live letter from Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, if you guys don't know, don't know, this channel is quite heavily related to Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> we love playing Final Fantasy XIV. We play the story patches and stuff like that. So, if you're unaware, um, and Final Fantasy XIV recently had another live letter. Live, if you, again, if you don't know, a live letter is basically. Uh, the developers, Yoshi P, and uh, another person. I do believe the other person seems to change. I don't get to watch the live letters live. I seem to be busy whenever they come up. Uh, at least not, not... I did get to watch some of them. Um, but I believe they... Uh, I think it was Soken, his name is, is was his guest this time. Uh, he's usually there, I believe. But he actually talked about what he did. Uh, that What he did is not important, though. Well, it is. It is important to the company, but it's not important to... Oh, I forgot we put him there. It's not important to the information we got. A live letter basically just shows up what's coming up in the next patch and what we're getting in the next uh, content-wise. And we're getting the next ultimate. The next ultimate is Ultima Weapon. It's Ultima Weapon, which is really cool. Uh, I was hoping for Ultima, Ultima Weapon. I'm excited to see it. I'm probably not going to get to do that content. Uh, my raid team... Uh, me and my raid team are not what we would call top tier, uh, should we say. Uh, we're still working our way through Sigma Savage. Uh, we did have a few issues with our uh, team. We had to, our dragoon had to leave, unfortunately. So we had to find another. We had to find another position for it, for him. Uh, but we finally found it, and we've uh, made some progress. We're on Savage Three right now. I'm assuming you're going to have to beat Savage Four to get access to that. And we've not tried Ultimate Bahamut yet either. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if you had to beat Ultimate Bahamut to get into this. That would be interesting. Uh, but ultimate, ultimate Ultima. That's that's gonna be exciting. I'm hoping it's gonna be with the four generals, and Ultima having like some really cool like uh, primals, like some primal level uh, fucking skills. Because I think we're gonna see Ifrit Titan and uh, Ifrit Titan and Garuda at some point through all this. But it's gonna be interesting nevertheless. So Ultima is. A new armor is coming. Uh, this is, I think, it's end of May when the patch is coming in. So I don't know. I guess like is the 30th of May one. I guess it probably be then, or is, is it 20? I don't know. I'd have to have to have to. I'd have to have a look at the calendar itself. But it's end of May, so probably whatever the last Tuesday. I'm probably betting the last Tuesday in May will probably be 
uh, when the patch drops. Next live letter is just before it, I believe. And we're going to... Although I don't think we actually have a date um, for that next live letter. But the live letter is going to have uh, the, the trailer for the new patch, basically. I believe. But um, yeah, new uh, they talked about a new stage of Eureka, which is the new stage of a relic weapon. Uh, they talked about the new Deep Dungeon, uh, which surprisingly is that thing in the Ruby Sea. Uh, I joked about this with my friend when they first showed it, showed us it. We joked about it being the next Deep Dungeon. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, turns out it is the next Deep Dungeon. So, I don't know. I don't think it looks big enough to be the Deep Dungeon. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Uh... It's from 60 plus, so I guess they... Deep Dungeon was originally meant to be content that low level people can do together. Like level 17 or higher could actually do. But I guess... I guess they want to keep the current Deep Dungeon as actually relevant content for those people. And then use this content as like from 60 to 70. Uh, which is fine, which is fine in my opinion. Uh, they showed off a app as well, they showed off the app, which we've, been finally, which we've been waiting a long time for, and I'm not super pleased with the app. I'm not super pleased with the app they showed off. It has a premium mode and a and a free mode, the which which I was expecting. I was expecting some sort of monetization on it, otherwise there would be no app at all, basically. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, I believe, kind of has to fund itself in a weird way, so uh, I'm not entirely sure how it works over at Square Enix. Uh, but it's they do have quite a limited budget. But so they're doing an doing an app and then having a premium mode. I'm not upset about that. And in fact, I probably would do an upset. I would probably would do a premium mode on it if it was worth it. Uh, if you the if you go premium, the saddle your chocobo saddle bag, which we recently got in, implemented into the game, gets doubled. So I'm not. Prove to me that you're the best. Uh, what level is he? He's not very high level. Sure. I'm just gonna have Misty like melt you. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Oh, here we go. We've got a boss. We've got another boss. What is this boss? What are you? You're a general. You got shit. You got shit all. Um, but yeah, so they, they released an app. And I don't mind necessarily paying for stuff. Like, that's not that's not why I'm not, like, butthurt that I have to, like, pay for something. I don't care about that. The saddlebag, the saddlebag being expanded to double the size is related to this, which I'm not super impressed with. Because uh, I thought we were all, uh, I thought the saddlebag was going to get doubled, and I thought we were just all going to have that. Like, we wouldn't have to pay for that. So that's... That's more of an upset than like an angry sort of thing, and I think the like you also get coins to manipulate the market board. Uh, not manipulate it in like a bad way uh, or a negative way. Like manipulate it in the form of like you get to buy items or like change the price of an item and stuff like that. And I'm glad that they limited the use of that because like people undercutting me on the market board is already like a huge problem in Final Fantasy 14, right? It's already like a massive issue and an, and an annoyance. Having people have access to that shit like 24-7, people are never going to leave that stuff alone. So I'm glad that they put a limiter on it, basically. Even, uh, even as this. So you get one coupon nut a day if it's free and you get two coupon nuts a day if, it, if you're on premium. And then you can buy, uh, well, I don't know if you can buy, but you also can use Kupo coins or whatever it's called. And I don't know how you get that. I'm assuming it's a premium currency, which probably costs like 79p to also do this. Uh, but I just don't, none of that really interests me. So I'm probably not going to buy it. The if, By installing it, you get a free favored destination. Uh, you get like a free favorite destination, uh, which makes a teleport in the game cheaper to a certain location. So I would probably just have that, to be honest. I'm happy with that. And the ability to talk to people whilst they're online or offline is is great. 
So yeah, there is some benefits. I, I like the idea of having an app. I don't like their premium. I It's not the point that I don't... It's not that I don't want a premium app, right? It's not that I don't mind paying for a premium app. Uh, I think if it's like five... Uh, so they said it was 500 yen, right? So that's probably like, what, £3.50 or something? £3.60, something like that. I don't mind paying that a month for a premium app, but I don't think the premium app is... I don't think those incentives are good or correct, basically, for a premium app. So I'm not going to be premium on it. But I'll definitely download it, and I'll probably definitely use the favoured destination, because that's fucking... That's good. That's good stuff. Uh, but yeah, so live there, bit controversial to some people. Some people are for it, some people are against it. Me personally, I don't care that there is a, pr a premium. I'm just not going to use it because uh, I don't feel like the rewards are good enough. Um, uh, they show off new dungeon. I said all that, and they show off new dungeon story and stuff like that. But yeah, so a lot of stuff coming to Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 14 uh, at the end of May with Destiny being at the beginning of May. So it might end up us finishing off Destiny and going straight into Final Fantasy, who knows. But May's gonna be good. There's a lot of games coming out in May as well. Uh, I think I think there's a lot of games coming out in May. Now that I think about it, actually, I think they're all coming out in September and not in May. <laughs> I can't believe it's at the end, of, we're at the end of April already. I can't believe we're that far. Uh, we're talking about May already, it's crazy. Uh, it feels like just yesterday it was Christmas. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, leave a like and a comment down below. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.